Hello, welcome back to another Wildlife Wednesday. I'm uh, just outside of the Nature Center here, and uh, this is not going to be your average Wildlife Wednesday. Unfortunately, this is the last Wildlife Wednesday, at least for the foreseeable future, that I will be in. I will be uh, moving on from Bethel Horizons. This is my last couple of days here at Bethel, uh, and so. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that we went off with a bang, that there was a fantastic episode, kind of a recap episode, uh, not unlike the one that James and I did back in December, recapping the best of Wildlife Wednesday. Uh, this one here will be the best of Bethel Horizons. We can start at the place that really all of the learning begins at, and that's the Nature Center. We have a wonderful projector room with a library stocked full of educational resources. We have the exhibit room where you can come and look at some of the taxidermied animals. Maybe took a look at our, uh, you know, our python there, Stella. We can head downstairs even. Now, hold on to your seats for this one. We've got a wonderful teaching space. Uh, you know, a bird watching station for once the bird feeders are back up again. And just a, a good classroom. Come over here. We've got the animal room. A place where you can come through, stroll through, and check out all the animals, see what's going on. We got our lovely tiger salamander. Uh, actually, the same tiger salamander that was featured in the very first Wildlife Wednesday. Hello everyone at home. My name is Jacob Friend, and today I bring you one of the coolest amphibians here, native to Wisconsin. This is the Eastern Tiger Salamander. We got our lovely red-eared slider, and of course, Bitsy. This is a snake. This is a bull snake. They have really, she's being a little bit temperamental today, so I'm not uh, handling her too much. And now, as soon as you come outside, you have another place of wonders. The greenhouse. Come in here. James, you know, as you saw in that episode, everything's a lot bigger now. The greenhouse has taken off. We've harvested some uh, tomatoes and uh, peppers, various other things from the greenhouse already this year. What a wonderful place to be. You know, you got all the spillage of the greenhouse because there's not enough room in the greenhouse. Just Absolutely fantastic. So yeah, that's the nature center. That's where most of the learning begins. That's where we can start and uh, finish this tour once we're done. Get a load. And our wonderfully new wood chip trail. Just on the way down to the next, uh, you know, highlight of Bethel Horizons, we got ourselves some mushrooms. I'm not sure what kind these are. They're pretty cool though. Take a look at those gills. You know, that underside of the mushroom there. We have these, uh, yeah, these gills. Nice. Now, not only do we have an extensive trail system, one that's over seven miles long if you were to add it all up, but trails that lead to wonderful places like the spring. This spring is absolutely fantastic. You can see the flowing water there. And of course it seeps right out of the ground. James and I actually did an episode on the spring last, uh, last fall. And we talked about how the spring comes from the aquifer uh, gets filtered through all the soil and the sediment and the rubble within the within the ground and then comes up as fresh clean clear water would you like to give us a little rundown about what is going on here so out here in the valley we've got a natural spring and that means we've got groundwater that's uh, kind of bubbling up through the sediments on the on the ground here and it creates these uh, tiny little streams that you can find really at the most bottom portion of the valley and uh, throughout kind of the, the slope in the basin area down here. Now keep in mind, not only is Bethel Horizons uh, fantastic back on main site, where you have the nature center and some closer things like the spring or the, you know, anywhere else that's kind of closer to main site there. Not only do you have that part of camp, but you have the expanse of the valley as well. 
you have 548 acres uh, that is all Bethel Horizons property that expands a wide range of environments all the way from anywhere that could be you know a dry uh, southern forest so you have upland forest where you're gonna find a lot of hickory a lot of uh, oak a lot of elm but you also have wetland environments like this where later times in the year you have plants such as Joe Pieweed Eutrochium maculatum which uh, can uh, paint an environment with this wonderful uh, color. Now and of course when you're walking down to this expansive area that we have all these 548 acres you can experience a variety of ecosystems from dry music forest down to marsh like I'm in right now down to a fully aquatic uh, environment like the pond which I'll be at here soon you can go to a cliff which is even more dry than that dry music forest you can go to you know kind of like a uh, more like a music forest where you get those really rich deep uh, thick soiled areas right near the uh, stream right at the bottom of the valleys you have the tall grass prairie right up near the prairie center. There's just a wide range and variety of ecosystems that you can experience here at the Horizons. And those ecosystems are not only incredible for you to enjoy, but incredible for the ecosystem and something that provides a wonderful service for the plants, animals, fungi, anything that lives here can all enjoy this uh, wonderful amount of diversity and intact ecosystem that there is here to offer at Bethel Horizons. Now in the pond, you can come down here and you can experience this. This pond was featured in quite a few episodes of Wildlife Wednesdays over the, over the past year and a half or so, uh, but it's a wonderful place that you can come to too. Maybe if you were to bring a fishing rod, you can come and go fishing for some of the bluegills or some of the bass in here. And the pond is not only a wonderful place for you to experience, but a place of very interesting diversity and has a couple of uh, unique species for Bethel Horizons. Great blue lobelia being one of them. And he took, take a look at that gorgeous color on that dog. That is incredible. Absolutely fantastic. It's in the same family as any bellflower. So it's in the bellflower family, Campanulaceae. And uh, it's a lobelia, so, uh, you know, a huge genus of flowers. So, kind of like, think cousins, uh, you know, ranging through the New World, so North and South America. There's a lot of diversity in South America, but here in Wisconsin, we have five different species of lobelia. And a couple of them grow here on the property. The coolest, in my opinion, being this great blue lobelia which uh, dots the landscape as you get closer to the uh, pond here. Now, of course, if we're, we're talking about these very cool plants, this great blue lobelia, which is actually right along the trail, right there, just dotting the trail sides as I walk here. But uh, you have incredible species of wildlife too, such as beaver, muskrat, and any of the migratory ducks that'll move through throughout the year that call this place the pond their home. Now of course I already mentioned the uh, you know Uplands dry music forest that is a classic classic habitat type oh classic habitat type for the uh, driftless area of Wisconsin but here it is I'm walking through it right now this is a little bit different than the trail that went through uh, the area of the spring because that has much moisture soils uh, year-round moisture is much higher because you're down in that valley but on the side of this cliff here with all these sandy soils much much more dry environment perfect place for species such as black oak and actually some very interesting orchid species it's not the showiest orchid ever but it is indeed an orchid and this one, more specifically, is called Downy Rattlesnake Plantain, or Goodyear pubescens, if you like to use the scientific name. Well, now we have moved from that uh, 
southern dry music forest. We're now up here on a cliff. And of course, not just any cliff, but main cliff. Now it is a little bit windy up here, so hopefully the audio is still good. But this cliff is an extremely special cliff. A cliff that has been featured multiple times in Bethel Horizon's uh, Wildlife Wednesday history. Now, if you may have guessed, uh, Main Cliff really is uh, our most popular cliff and arguably the best cliff. If it's not the best cliff, uh, it's definitely up there. A place, again, not only of natural and, uh, you know, ecological significance, but one of a human significance to the people that have lived and worked here at Bethel Horizons. Now, as I get closer to the uh, nature center, which is just right back up there, and we're kind of finishing the loop of the valley, I kind of want to point out this. Some of the giant trees that we have here. Uh, you know, this tree here, this black walnut, I mean, it could be well over, it's probably a four to 500 year old tree. But of course, there's so many giant trees that are here on Bethel Horizon's property that had just never been cut down. Uh, one of them being that tree that sits out uh, just off of Bethel Horizon's property that was featured in that Cliffs video as well. Now this here is the oldest and most incredibly impossibly gigantic oak tree I have ever seen in my life. This is a white oak and it is just incre unbelievably gigantic. I and trees are kind of like a uh, history book, but a history book of the land. One where if you were to cut it open, you would be able to see years of drought, years of good rain, years of fire, years of maybe insects that were plaguing the tree. You would really be able to tell a lot about what is going on in the landscape for the entire life of that tree which is something absolutely, I mean, it's fantastic. and so, so cool to think about, especially since that one out at Heathcliff. I mean, that could be pushing 800 years old, maybe older, who knows. All right, and now for the final feature of, and now for the final uh, ecological feature of this Wildlife Wednesday, we have the prairie, the tall grass prairie, right around the aptly named Prairie Center. Now this prairie has been featured in many, many Wildlife Wednesdays, ranging from the prairie updates to the uh, little, uh, you know, prairie walkthrough that I did with uh, Ben Pritchard earlier this year, at, right during uh, staff training. And now take a look at it. It's a little bit different, a much taller. You know, you got uh, a couple little different varieties of some sunflowers going on here. That's the tall Coreopsis. Fantastic. I mean, just another classic, classic ecosystem uh, for southwestern Wisconsin in the Driftless area, a tall grass prairie. Now one thing quickly that I do want to highlight that has not been here before, at least that I've seen, is this white bottle gentian, Gentiana alba. This is not a species that I've seen here at Bethel Horizons before. Usually it's more of a uh, music prairie species, one that you'll find like Near, uh, a, near a marsh or some form of water. Uh, but this one's right up here doing just wonderfully in this tall grass prairie. So, uh, yeah, that's the prairie. The whole prairie. Uh, you know, and truly a wonderful place, uh, not only for the plant species that live within it, but the homes that the plant species make for the fungi in the ground, maybe some bacteria as well, and of course the wildlife, such as birds, mammals, uh, and everything in between. Uh, and so yeah, that kind of wraps up the best of Bethel. That's kind of, at least from my point of view, the uh, most important and maybe the most impactful uh, ecological things that Bethel has to offer and with that it's kind of coming to the end of this Wildlife Wednesday 
Now, if you've made it all this way into the video, I am super grateful that you have watched these videos. This is actually the 70th Wildlife Wednesday, and while it unfortunately may be my last, uh, I am super happy that there were people that watched and enjoyed almost every single one of them. So, uh, now, there is someone that you know very well that will be taken back over the rings of these, uh, these videos here. And, uh, let's go talk to him. Uh, okay. Well, uh, here's the uh, fella that will be uh, taken off. Oh. <laughs> no, James. Hey. What are you doing? I'm shaking these loose branches off, off of the tree from the storm so they don't fall and hit somebody or some critter on the head. James, you know you're going to be taking over the Wildlife Wednesdays now. What? Yeah, he knows. Okay. Well, uh, you know, I've had a great time making these Wildlife Wednesdays for the past 70 weeks. Uh, so yeah. Thank you for watching this episode of Wildlife Wednesday. And uh, that fellow over there will be uh, seeing you on the next one. But of course, before the next one, make sure you get outside. Even if it's just around the block, whatever it may be, get outside, enjoy your time out in nature. And thank you for watching Wildlife Wednesday.